Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice homemade equation. It's called homemade because I came up with the idea but I think anyone can come up with this idea. Maybe if you have some time left and if I don't forget I'll show you how to come up with problems like these. So we have 1 over z plus 1 over absolute value of z equals 9 plus 3i divided by 25. And what are we going to solve for? We're going to solve for z. What is z? z is a complex number. What is a complex number? A complex number z can be written as a plus bi where a and b are real numbers and i is the square root of negative 1. Of course I'm talking about the principal square root because there are two square roots. If you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I also have another channel called cyber math cyber with an s. Okay great let's go ahead and talk about how we can solve this problem. Well, I already gave you the clue, right? Hopefully. I said, okay, z equals a plus v i. Yes, that's what we're going to use. It's also the name of this channel. Hope you remember that. So we're going to go ahead and substitute. But what is the absolute value of z? If z is equal to a plus v i, then absolute value is defined by the distance from zero. It's always like that. So by Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Make sense? Awesome. Now let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. We're going to substitute everything. So 1 over z is going to be 1 over a plus b i. And then 1 over absolute value is going to be 1 over the square root of a squared plus b squared. By the way, um, there's something called the complex conjugate. If z is equal to a plus b i, then z bar is called a minus b i. When you add these numbers, you get a real number. When you multiply them, you get a real number again. And those numbers are unique. They are a nice pair. Make sense? So we're going to use that idea because you can't really divide by a complex number. How do you divide? Like you can divide 12 by 3 because 3 goes to 12 four times. You probably know that, right? Or you can divide 8 by 1 half because it goes 16 times. A lot of people are kind of puzzled by this. Like how many halves go into 8? 4. No, that's incorrect. Be careful. It's kind of like a riddle. Anyways, so how do you do this? Like what times a plus b i is 1? I don't know. I mean, I can find out, like, do the following. Uh, multiply it by c plus d i and set it equal to 1 and try to solve for c and d in terms of a and b. But super complicated, right? You don't want to do that. Instead, we can go ahead and multiply by the conjugate. Because when you do, you're going to get a real number at the bottom or denominator. Since the denominator is a real number, once we multiply, then we can make a common denominator and just work with the numerators and denominators separately because at least the denominator will be real. Just like how we want to rationalize denominator, like when we get something like this, we definitely want to turn this into a rational number. And this is kind of like realizing the denominator, right? You want to make it real. Okay, so once we multiply by 1 in the numerator, we're going to get a minus bi. One thing to keep in mind, if you multiply a plus bi and its complex conjugate, you get from difference of two squares, you get a sum of two squares, which is kind of weird because i squared is negative one. And don't ever forget that. Because remember, I told you i is the square root of negative one. So i squared is negative one. So you'll get a squared plus b squared here in the denominator. Good. And that's nice because uh, that'll make the common denominator stuff easy. All we have to do is multiply this one by the denominator. So that we can just square this and now we'll have a common denominator. Make sense? So the numerator will be a minus bi plus square root of a squared plus b squared divided by a squared plus b squared because we already got rid of the radical. And now this is equal to what is given 9 plus 3i divided by 25. So our goal from this point on is to solve for a and B. How do you solve for A and B? Good question. You could first do the following, which is cross multiplication. So let's go ahead and try a couple different things here. First of which is cross multiplication. If you multiply everything by 25, it's going to look like this. Let me go ahead and write it this way first because I'm going to separate the real and imaginary parts, right? So that's why I want to keep it that way. So you don't have to distribute everything. So here, for example, these two make up the real part. So let's just go ahead and multiply them by 25. And then 
the next thing is going to be the imaginary part. Here, the real part is made up by 9 times this. So I'm going to write it like this. And you know what? I can actually distribute. It's probably better that way. 9a squared plus 9b squared. And then the imaginary part is just going to be 3a squared plus 3b squared. And that's going to be the imaginary part. Make sense? Cool, cool. From here, what do we get? We get a nice... I'm just kidding. It's not going to be nice. It's an ugly system. So that's, uh, this is what it's going to look like. This is the real part. This is the real part. Maybe it's not super bad. 25a plus 25 square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to 9a squared plus 9b squared. And the other one is going to give us 3a squared plus 3b squared equals negative 25b. Now, here's one thing that might make things a little easier. Uh, from here, you can solve for a squared plus b squared and plug it in here. That'll give you a relationship between a and b. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to isolate a squared plus b squared from here. That's going to be negative 25b divided by 3. Even though we have a's and b's on both sides, it's not bad because we can directly uh, plug it in here and here. So from that equation, I get 25a plus, oh, by the way, I have to use the square root of this. Uh-oh, that's going to be bad, right? And then equals 9 times this. It's going to be negative 225p divided by 3. So at this point, I think I would probably put these together and then square both sides. And then it should give me the answer, right? But guess what? I can multiply, I mean divide everything by 25 right? If you do, we're going to get a plus the square root of negative. This kind of tells me that b is negative because we want this to be well-defined, right? Well, actually, it's something that we came up with, so hmm, I think b needs to be negative, though, in my opinion. And this will be, if you divide by, what was the answer? Negative 9, right? b over 3, and that could even simplify more. Negative 3b, okay, cool. Negative 3b, even better. I put negative 9, negative 3b. So now we can go ahead and put a's and b's on both sides. But anyways, to keep a long story short, I got a in terms of b. So at least I have something that I can substitute into one of these equations. But that's going to be a lot of work, and I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you because I'm about to show you the second method. Ready? Okay, I'm going to go back to the original equation that I, we got here, which is the a minus b, I think. So let me go ahead and rewrite it. It's a minus bi plus the square root of a squared plus b squared divided by a squared plus b squared equals 9 plus 3i over 25. Okay, and then once we separate the real parts, we're going to be good. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking if this equa equation is going to be satisfied, there's a chance that this will be 25 and this will be that. In other words, the real part is a plus the square root of a squared plus b squared. Can that equal 9? And the imaginary part negative b is equal to 3, which means b is equal to negative 3. Is that possible at all? And, of course, I also want a squared plus b squared equals 25 at the same time. So I have three equations, but two variables, so they have to be consistent. So just solve any of these. Um, this is probably a good one to start with. Square root it, it's 5, and from here I get a plus 5 equals 9. That means a equals 4. But we already got b equals negative 3. And that satisfies this equation. So bingo. Yay, we got a solution. And I think that is the only solution. So it looks like z equals 4 minus 3i is the only solution. I was thinking maybe b can be positive 3. But no, because we also noticed with this one that b needs to be negative. Okay? And let's see if I included a result from, oops, I forgot, sorry about that. But you can try this same thing with Wolfram Alpha and you should get the exact same solution. But, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.